Welcome back to the geographic object based image analysis in Python tutorial series. So real quick recap of where we are. We have now taken our truth data set for our NAPE image and we have split it up into a training data set and a test data set. And that's what we did in our last video. What we need to do, oh, and we also have our segments turn those on, we want to classify in our classification. So the next step is to assign statistics from the segments, which we have already done, to our training data set so that we can then train our classifying algorithm, our random forest algorithm. And that's what we're going to work on in this video. So I'm going to pop back over to PyCharm to the code we have. And right now I'm on this truth data file which is the file we created to split our truth and train data sets. And what you'll notice is that in the last video, I loaded the Snape image and actually never used it because we didn't have time to get to using it. But what I want to do here so that we don't uh, redo what we've already done is start a new file and I'm going to copy this code over there because we didn't use it here. So I'm going to go to uh, right click over here on my project and I'm going to create a new Python file and we'll call this rasterize truth data. Okay. And I'm just going to come back over. I'm going to just control X. I'm going to cut out the code here that we didn't use. I'm going to paste it over here and I'm going to zoom in on this for you. We also didn't use these two imports here, so I'm going to cut those out and paste them over here. Okay, so we've used GDAL before. We're using GDAL here. OGR is the vector equivalent of GDAL. Um, it's used to read vector layers um, in Python, and so we're going to use that to read in uh, the vector layer, the training data that we've created. And actually, I apologize for this. I don't need to create this new file. Let's actually get rid of this file that I just made you create. We're going to go straight back over to our main object-based image analysis script here. We've already loaded in our NAPE data set. And we're just going to keep working from this here. So I'm going to scroll down to below where I segmented the features a couple of videos ago. And we're going to start working down here. Because once I have these segments, and once I have assigned the uh, the statistics to each segment, then I can start working with my truth data set down here. So I apologize for leading you astray a little bit right there, um, but we'll get started with this down here. So I already have my NAPE data set, and now what I need to do is I need to read in my training data set. So let's call this our training file name is going to be C temp nape train dot shp um, train ds our data source is going to be ogr dot open train fn and I need to go up here to, to the top to import ogr and I'll just remind you that I've posted this code on my website open source options dot com. There's a link included in the description below. Um, so you can go copy and paste the previous code we worked on here if you're um, lost or if you're not exactly sure where to start. Also go back and watch the previous videos in this uh, playlist for this series. Okay, so we've got our training data set opened and we're going to get a layer. I'm going to call it LYR equals train DS. And there's only one layer here, so I can just call get layer, close parentheses, and now we have our training data set layer. So now I'm going to create a GDAL driver to, uh, that will allow us to create a new data set. So we're going to do GDAL dot get driver by name, and we're going to get a memory driver to create a data set in memory. And we're going to create a new GDAL data set, and this is going to be the one that is our rasterized vectors. So we're going to call this our target data set, and this is going to be driver. We're going to create the driver, 
the file, or we're going to create the file. Um, it's in memory, so we can leave the file name blank. The, we're going to give it the X size number of columns, which is going to be our nape ds dot raster, oops, dot raster X size. Our Y size is going to be nape ds dot raster Y size. And then we need to give it, I believe, the number of bands. And the, the data type is going to be GDAL dot GDT unsigned integer. That means positive numbers, um, uint 16, 16 bit unsigned integer. So that will now create our GDAL data set. We need to set the geo transform, which will tell us where in space this is located relative to our projection. So we do target ds dot set geo transform, and it's going to be the same as nape ds. We'll do nape ds dot get geo transform. We need to set a projection, so target ds dot set projection nape ds dot get projection. Okay, so now you set up all the spatial information that we need for this data source. Next, we're going to rasterize our data set now. We're going to rasterize it into, so we're going to rasterize our training data, and we're going to rasterize it to our target data set. And so the way we do that is we do gdal.rasterize layer. And the first layer is going to be target DS. Then we need to give it the band to rasterize to and the name of the layer to rasterize. Now, remember we had those attribute values we created in our last video, um, an ID for each class that ranges from 1 to 7. If I run this right now, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get just a value of 1 where there's a point on my raster. But I want to get a value between 1 and 7 related to the class. And so the way I do that is I need to set up some options for this uh, rasterized layer. And so my options, I'm going to specify attribute equals ID. Okay? And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I go back over to QGIS and I turn on my training and test data, I'm going to open up the attribute table here. You can see I have this ID column, that, and it's an integer column. What that means is when I do the rasterization, it's going to label my raster or give the raster value the value corresponding to the ID field. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. Okay, so now we've gone through this. We have everything set up here and we're going to be able to rasterize this layer. Okay, all right. So we have this written in our main script and if I click run, I'm gonna to have to wait for everything to happen. I'm gonna to have to wait for the image to load, the segmentation to happen, um, then I'm gonna to have to wait for the segment statistics to be assigned to each segment and then I'm finally going to run this. I want to just run this without going through all that. So I'm going to copy the code that we've just created. I'm going to go back. I'm going to open my rasterized truth data file back up. I'm going to zoom in here for you. And I'm going to copy this down to the bottom. So I guess I had to create this file, told you we weren't going to use it, and now I'm going to use it again. So I apologize for that. Um, we'll get rid of these two rows because we don't actually use them. But this should set things up the same as if we were in the other one because we've loaded the NAEP data set, which is the only data set we're dependent on, just like we have in our main OBIA script. Okay, so we've got this here. We've got our OBIA script here. And the code is going to be the same. So I'm going to use this just to run this and show you what our output is going to look like. Okay, and so let's do this. So let's do data equals target ds dot get raster band. 
get the first raster band dot read as array. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print some information out about data. So let's go print uh, min data dot min. I'm going to do call a function. We'll see if this works. I'm going to do max data dot max. And I'm going to do mean data dot mean. Okay. And so what should happen here is my max should be seven. That's the maximum value for my class. My minimum should be zero because zero is my no data value here. And my mean should be greater than zero. So let's go ahead um, and run this and see exactly what happens. Okay, so I'm going to click, I'm not going to click run yet. I need to go to run and click run here and rasterize truth data and this will run. Okay, and so something's not quite right because my min is zero and my max is 255. Um, oh, and I know what the problem is. So here we go. So I created these options, but I never set the options here. So in the line g.rasterize layer at the end, I need to do options equals options. Okay, now let's go back over to our OBIA script and let's add that in here. Options equals options and come back over to rasterize truth. Now let's click run. Okay, there you go. Our minimum is zero, our maximum is seven, and you can see our mean is greater than zero, which is what we want to have happen. Okay. Now I'm just gonna tell you, this is a little messy right now. Like we have this script, doesn't have, it has a function right here, right in the middle of a script. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason to the order of a lot of this. Right now, I'm just building this with you from the ground up. And this is generally how I start to build these applications. I start writing code, making sure it works, putting things in different files. And then as I go, I clean this up into functions that modularize the code and that make it a lot easier to read and a lot easier to reuse. Like I said, this is messy right now. We'll start going through this eventually and cleaning it up so that it can be reused a lot better than we currently have it right now. I hate this when I have like file names getting defined, you know, in the middle of the file, but we're gonna keep going with this. And so, like I said, we rasterize these data um, and in the next video, we can start working. We can start working on getting the the, the um, segment statistics associated with each of these classes that we can then use in our model. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. Remember to check out the code on opensourceoptions.com um, so that you can copy and paste that if you're having troubles. There's also more content and information on opensourceoptions.com. I have some courses on developing QGIS plugins um, and working with Python and QGIS and some cartography courses. Um, so hopefully you'll find those useful. Thanks for watching.